This video is sponsored by Wing Wing Technology, your ultimate fly sim hardware solution. Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing wonderfully well. Today we're in the FA18C Hornet and we're doing a revised cockpit familiarization tutorial. So, at first glance, this cockpit can look very imposing. It is actually very simple, very well laid out, and very well modelled. So, we split it into several sections. We've got left console. We've got left auxiliary panel. We've got front dash here. Uh, it's not the correct term, but it's the generic term we use for all of the aircraft. And that can be split into subparts, known as the IFI here. The UFC there, our front controller. Flight instrument panel there. HUD there. And I suppose we'd also include the front bow. Right auxiliary panel. Right console. Let's start with the left console. So starting from the far left, up here we have a bit built-in test for uh, a video here which is not modelled but I thought I'd show that. Zoom in, we have the nuclear button here, nuclear weapon switch which is not modelled because we don't have any nukes in this variant but you can still twiddle the switch. We have the mission computer. Do we want to isolate one off, two off or just leave it in the normal position? Next, hydraulic isolate switch. Do you want to go over that RC? In override position, hydraulic circuit 2B isolation is overridden to allow in-flight recharging of the APU accumulator. Roger, we're not sure if it's modelled or not. Next, something that is modelled, the onboard chemical oxygen generation, OBOX. Do we want it on or off? You will want that on. And the actual oxygen flow, drag or use your mouse scroll, on or off. Next, something that's not modelled, the ALE39 reset. No idea what it is, but it's not modelled and you can't click on it. Next, a couple of things that are not modelled, but they may one day be the antenna select. So for COM1, do we want upper antenna, lower antenna, or automatic selection? And the same for the IFF, upper or lower, or both. Again, not modelled at the moment. Next, a couple of things that are not modelled, at least at the moment. We've got here the COM, uh, this is all about ciphering. So the COM relay, ciphering off or plane, GXMIT. Again, this is to do with ciphering. Uh, of comms 1 and comms 2, not model at the moment. Next is the manual ILS panel, or ICLS. Do we want to first of all control it from, or select it from the UFC, or manually through this panel? And if we want to do it manually through this panel, we can select the various channels up to 20 for the ICLS, the uh, carrier landing system. Next, the IFF panel here, which is partially modeled at the moment. Crypto is not modeled at the moment. This is to do with encryption, obviously and IFF mode 4 which is partially modelled although that's all we can say at the moment uh, and we can have this off we can have this display only or display and audio and this uh, master mode for the IFF we can have it on normal operation or emergency operation next master audio volume panel knobs that we can turn here and they are all set to uh, from a hot start here they're all set to maximum our vocals, whether you want hot mic or cold mic. We've got our uh, ICS, our intercom system. We've got our weapons beeps and tones. We've got our RWR beeps and tones. Our mids A and mids B channels here. We've got our TACAN, which strangely was set a minimal, so it's something to take note of. And we've got our auxiliary, so those are different volumes. Next, circuit breakers, and if you want to know what they are, if you can't read them, just hover over them and you can pull them out and ruin your plane as I've just done whoops and next our APU and engine crank panel where we want to turn the APU on and when it's ready and going we'll have the green light to go engine crank it's in the off position but if you want to start the engine then press and hold left or press and hold right mouse button to start that engine next flight control system uh, we've got on this panel the rudder so we can trim the rudder here and as well as that we can go to takeoff trim by pushing and holding that middle one there Next, we've got our gain switch in normal, sets a normal flap scheduling. Override allows the pilot to select a fixed value for speed, altitude, and AOA inputs to the flight control computers. Thus, a fixed leading edge and trailing edge flap position dependent on flap switch position. Thank you very much. And we've got the FCS reset here, and I might want to reset the FCS, for instance, if I've got errors to clear, and so on. Fuel panel, which encompasses this and a little bit of that panel there. We've got our air-to-air refueling probe, emergency extend, normal extend, and retract. 
we've got our external tanks. We can isolate the wing tanks here or the center tank here and we can for instance use this if we want to stop draining a certain tank. So for instance if we want to drain from the center but not the wings then we can control which drain first. Fuel dump on or off obviously and if I can sneak this guy out of the way we've got our internal wing tanks so we have fuel tanks inside our wings internal tanks and we can inhibit the filling of those tanks if we wanted to for some reason battle damage or whatever then we can uh, we can do that next is our gen tie switch i'll see i think i'll bring you in for that in normal mode will allow the generators to tie together if there's no issues if there is an issue with one generator they will tend to separate and they will automatically try and tie back together if that doesn't happen or if you have a gen tie malfunction you can manually try and reset the gen tie by opening the clever and going to reset next exterior light panel we've got here our strobes and whether we want strobes bright off or dim position lights drag and pull or use mouse scroll from off to bright formation lights from off to bright Next, we've got ground power. If we wanted to start from ground power, and we could do that for whatever reason, then we've got uh, switches here. And the relevance, I'm going to just go down here. If you want to know the relevance of each switch, we've got a plaque here that is going to tell you which each represents during uh, a ground power start. We've got the throttle quadrant itself. Now, the buttons on it are um, not clickable with the mouse. You have to, therefore, bind them through the adjust controls menu so we won't go over there uh, we've got an associated friction lever um, which doesn't work because it's obviously it's virtual but it looks very nice we've got next the uh, fire and bleed air test here so we can run uh, associated test A or associated test B or just leave it in the normal position there and that is that's modelled we've got the seat height this works it's really cool and useful so remember that's there and doesn't work but we've got our shoulder harness control panel as far as I'm aware it's not modelled in any way next panic dispense button um, if we're in trouble and we're going to whack some flares out or whatever you can bang on that there and that is the left console let's move to left auxiliary panel start at the bottom left hook bypass whether it's relevant to field or carrier now there's some misconceptions about this it doesn't actually change the hook in any way all it changes is the relationship or should I say how the angle of attack index lights work which are beside the HUD and we'll look at them later so it won't actually change the hook operation landing or slash taxi lights simply on or off the launch bar for when we're hooking up to the carrier we've got it retracted or we can extend it down for a hookup our flap position whether we want it in an automatic mode in a half deployed mode or a full deployed mode and you can see the uh, indicator lights there anti-skid whether we want it on or off we've got our brake pressure shown here in a gauge next parking brake and emergency brake so it's a dual purpose uh, control here so if the brakes are off which they are now it's well as it shows here if you want parking brake then we're gonna left click to show park and then pull with mouse scroll wheel you can see the small pressure changes there parking brakes are now on turn them off we will mouse scroll wheel again uh, no sorry left click and it will go back to that so it's turned off again if we want emergency brakes then we pull it when they're in this position in the off position that's emergency brakes okay click and mouse scroll to put that back in next selective jettison whether we want to jettison the left fuselage missile right fuselage missile a specific rack launcher or the actual stores themselves this is used in collaboration with our uh, selector here that we'll have a look at in a bit and then you push that guy in the middle to actually do the jettison up to the landing gear so this is the the landing gear knob we can put it up for the gear up down for gear down it can also be rotated Let's see if that works here yep rotated for emergency drop with mouse scroll wheel associated to that will be lights and tone and if you want to silence the warning tone we can press that guy there very hard to get to also we've got this guy here down lock override button that will be you RC down lock override button if the landing gear levers mechanical stop remains extended after takeoff preventing movement of the handle from down to up position the down lock override button retracts the mechanical stop from the landing gear control handle allowing it to be moved down or to up there you go and in case of an emergency we've got the emergency canopy jettison handle and finally, and most importantly, of course, we've got the vent louvers here, which I've just discovered a model, uh, and I love that. 
So we start down the bottom left, push emergency jettison known as the Admiral's doorbell. This will jet in some pylons that are going to be containing bombs and whatnot and fuel tanks. And we'll retain your, if I get this right, your outer sidewinders and, or your, out, yeah, your outer sidewinders and your um, kind of fuselage mounted missiles. Using the jettison knob that we saw earlier, and we've got our station selector, whether we want to jettison our center station, our left inboard, right inboard, left inboard, out inboard, and we can do a combination like that, for instance. Our status of our uh, three nose, uh, three gear, sorry, flap status, and abnormal flap function uh, highlighted, uh, indicated there. Onto our IV here. This is all about fuel display, fuel control, uh, engine operation. So left and right engine RPMs in percent, temperatures in Celsius, fuel flow in hundreds of pounds per hour, nozzle positions in percent, and oil pressure the engine in psi. And just spool up and show you that. Okay, um, we've got over here total fuel, including external mounted tanks, total internal fuel, current selected bingo fuel, our time, and our stopwatch or our timer. We can change the mode, function of the IFE. We can change our quantity here. This is going to show you specific tanks, so, uh, you know, front tank and uh, wing tanks and so on. We can set our bingo in hundreds of pounds there. We can change the zone, Zulu time or local time. And we can do our timer, stopwatch there. Push and hold to clear. And we've got the brightness of this panel. And we've got regarding video recorder and none of this is functional. Next, dominating the front dash are the three screens. Now you could get away with calling these MFDs, however the correct Names are left DDI, right DDI, and the lower, or the AMPCD. These are both multifunction screens, and from within them we can get various options and functions. I'll say probably 95% of the things that you can do uh, in system operation are going to be in these screens. Hence why the rest of the cockpit is so sparse compared with an old F-15C or something like that. Associated with each screen are several buttons, OSBs here, and they their function will depend on what's displayed, so stores, uh, gun, and so on. Also with the DDIs, we've got contrast, brightness, off, night, or day mode. Night just makes it dimmer. Same with that DDI, and slightly different on the AMPCD. We've got gain, up or down, contrast, up or down, symbology brightness, up or down the overall brightness of the you know the whole screen and night or day operation left dash master arm armed or safe do we want to have the aircraft in air to ground mode air to air mode that's only going to work once we're airborne got if we have a fire on board detected then we can press this guy here to shut down the left engine cut the fuel when the cycle has complete and it's ready to actually fire the extinguishers and this will show ready then we'll press this one to actually fire the extinguishers got a generic master caution button here and we can cancel that manually like thus these indicated lights will come back to in a minute right dash indicated lights again we'll come back to those when we do the light test we've got an APU fire extinguisher here to fire the extinguishers for the APU we've got the associated right engine uh, cut off in case of fire here IR cool operation I'll see I'll hand over to you so in normal, the seeker head cool down cycle is always active. In off, the cooling cycle is inactive unless you don't have weight on wheels, your master arm switch is set to arm, and your AIM-9 is selected as the priority weapon. Our helmet mounted display, we're going to power it up and that's the brightness. So we'll get that to work, there you see, we've got that, turn that off. Spin, emergency spin recovery, if you do find yourself in a spin, which can happen, then you can uh, change the computer system that can help you get out the spin there and we've got a video on that if you want to go and check that out in more detail as we head up as we head up we have a contemporary hud here with various symbologies if you want to know more about that please go and watch our hud symbology tutorial we've got angle of attack indexer lights here uh these are going to be used for landing to get to the correct angle of attack we've got a built-in test for the recorder here a video which doesn't work obviously because we've got no video simulated next to the ufc the up front controller here, probably where most of your work is going to be done. It's the main interaction between you and the systems on the machine. I'm just thinking where to start. Submenus, uh, autopilot, IFF, TACAN, 
ILS or ACLS, data link, beacon, and whether we want to turn the system on or off. Numpad for data entry, um, can also be used for letter entry, clear, enter, different options associated um, that we can use with these buttons here to choose the different options. Uh, we've got an IP here, uh, identifier uh, for IFF, I believe, is not modelled. ADF, automatic direction finding, a type of radio navigation, whether we want to use it in collaboration with COM1, COM2 or not at all. Speaking of COM1, we've got COM1 there, COM2 there, two primary radio channels, the volume of it there, the display of it, uh, the channel display of it there, and the selector here, and we can rotate that to cycle through and we can pull it and we can have extra options shown on the UFC options here uh, and again full radio tutorial please go and watch that same thing for COM2 emissions control if we want to stop emissions for obvious reasons for stealth reasons and the brightness of the UFC next HUD control panel uh, the declutter level if you like of the HUD what we show normal reject 1 and reject 2 fully covered in our HUD tutorial video a brightness knob for the HUD symbology day or night mode for the HUD. These three here are relative to the HUD FLIR which we don't have on this model so you can essentially ignore them but you can uh, move them. The brightness of the A angle of attack indexer lights which you saw up on the left of the HUD there. The uh, input for or should I say which altitude sensor we want to use for the displayed altitude in the HUD barometric or radio. Our input for our attitude do we want it to be uh, standby, automatically selected or override for the INS. Regards operation of navigation in the AMPCD, we have the ability to change a heading line, and we have the ability to add and change a course line, and uh, covered obviously in our navigation tutorial. Next we have the stick here, and I can't press any of these buttons with the mouse obviously, you have to bind them, but I'm going to get rid of it by clicking here. Below the AMPCD, we first have the manual panel for the ALR67. This is the R radar warning receiver, RWR, master audio control panel, which apparently doesn't have any function according to this, but okay. We have a dimmer switch here, or dimmer knob. We have the main power switch. Display here is going to uh, choose how many threats we want to be able to show, and we can limit it to six threats. This is all covered in the RWR uh, tutorial, but we'll carry on ever so quickly. Special, no function. Offset, that's a declutter. It allows us to visibly offset symbols uh, away from each other to stop decluttering and overlayering. And we've got a built-in test, which I can't seem to get rid of, but that's there. Uh, we've also got priority selection. Uh, we've got I, A, U, and F. Uh, can you read out what they are, please, RC? That selects the priority of the emitter type to be displayed. Normal, intercept, triple A, unknown, and friendly. Roger, thank you. If you want to know more about that, please uh, head to our countermeasure tutorial. ECM, uh, so jammer, at the time of making this video is not implemented, but it obviously soon will be, so just pretend it is implemented. That's what I do. Do we want it off? Standby. Test, receive only, or receive and transmit. The dispenser system, chat and flares, uh, do we want it off? Do we want the system energized? Do we want a bypass where we can manually control chat and flare? Auxiliary release, I best hand this over to RC. That enables jettison of hung stores or store and rack launcher combinations from the BRU-32 slash A racks on station 2, 3, 5, 7, and 8. Roger, uh, we can adjust the um, rudder assembly, uh, you know, where the rudders are if it was the real plane there. And we have the cabin pressure equivalent in thousands of feet. Next, flight control panel, technically standby flight control panel. Here we have our standby ADI, attitude director indicator, often known as a artificial horizon we have the ability to test it there look at that uh, with nav indicators you can see there have the ability to cage it uncage it here and adjust trim on it as well below it cunningly hidden is our, uh, our your slip gauge there manual your slip gauge and below it a turn rate indicator here we have our standby oh and it's standby because the primary is going to be on the ddis everything primary is going to be on the ddis or the hud Standby RWR display here, and you can see we've got us there, an N there, and a AWACS there, and we're going to adjust the intensity there. Next, standby speedo in 100s of knots, and that's going to be presumably cast rather than IAS. 
Next, we're going to have our standby barometric altimeter, and we're going to have thousands of feet, absolute there, and we can adjust our, uh, our atmospheric pressure there, shown there in inches of mercury. Here we have our standby VSI, our vertical speed indicator, up or down, shown in thousands of feet per minute. So, right auxiliary panel vents, very important. Hook up or down, an indicator like thus. Next, wing fold control lever here, we can, so we can have the wings obviously stowed or in flight condition. AV cool, I'll hand that over to RC. Uh, in normal, your flight controls controller and your rectifiers are cooled by avionics air. In emergency, your flight control controllers and your right transformer rectifier are cooled by ram air. Well, oh, John, I don't know if that's modeled or not. We've got more indicator lights. We'll come back to them when we test them. We've got our bureau number plaque there. I, out of interest, I wonder if we've all got the same bureau number plaque. I guess we have, haven't we? Radar altimeter here, and we can set our uh, warning level there, you know, 400 feet, 300 feet, and so on. Times 100, uh, yeah, times 100 feet. Hydraulic pressure, systems 1 and 2, times 1,000 PSI. Obviously, they want to keep them between uh, those figures there. So, right console. We've got two voltmeters here for utility and for our emergency battery there. We've got left generator, right generator, whether we want them off or in normal operation. A battery selector, whether we want batteries off or main battery on or override, we can energize the contacts for the emergency battery. ECS, environmental control system. We've got our main ECS mode selector here, auto, or we can have manual, or we can have off slash ram air. Temperature control, one is for the cockpit or cabin. Uh, one is for the uh, the suit. That's not modelled, obviously. We've got our cabin pressure switch here, where we can have normal operation. We can have pressure. We can have dump, or we can have ram slash dump. Our bleed air. We have the ability to select. Uh, it's probably best if I, if you do this one, RC. Bleed air allows bleed air from the engines into the ECS. Both obviously will allow both engines to supply ECS. Right off will turn off the right engine. Uh, ECS flow left will turn the left off. ECS flow off. Um, off will turn off all ECS flow. And AUG, which is pull, will allow the APU to augment the bleed air pressurization when the, weight on, when the aircraft is weighed on wheels. Thank you. This stuff is all modeled as well, so just bear that in mind. Whether we want your anti-ice for the pitot tube, uh, whether we want it for the engine, and we can also test for the engine and have auto for the pitot. Uh, canopy defog, we like that on an axis. Windshield anti-ice, uh, off or anti-rain. And we have interior lights here, uh, whether we want the lighting intensity on the consoles, on the instrument panel, or floodlights. Uh, we'll come back to that. Our warning caution lights, we'll look at in a second. Our chart lights, so that's a physical, we've got a you know, paper chart in our hand, we've got a light for that. Our uh, mode here, whether we want uh, these lights in day, night, or night vision friendly mode. It's so that, and if I press and hold the test, what we're going to do is test all of these warning and indicator lights here. So you can see these guys we've got here. RC will tell us the meaning of these lights now. Okay, check seat means your seat is not your ejection seat is not armed. APU accumulator means that accumulator pressure necessary for starting the engine is insufficient. Battery SW means your battery is on. FCS hot means your flight control computers are overheating. Gen tie means your gen tie switch is set to reset. Fuel low means your fuel quantity is under 800 pounds. FCES means a function has been lost in one or more axis of flights from your flight computer. Left gen means your left generator output has failed or is turned off, and same thing with the right gen. Roger, if we now move to the uh, kind of RWR radar type uh, ones above the right DDIRC. Okay, recorder on means your flight recorder's on. AI means you have airborne intercept uh, radar locked to the aircraft. CW means you have aircraft illuminated by continuous wave radar. Oh, that means a missile, by the way, CW. Yep. This is countermeasure dispense program is active. SAM means you're being tracked by a SAM. 
Uh, light is solid when radar is tracking and flashing when guiding a missile. AAA uh, means you're being tracked by a AAA. Steady light for radar directed AAA, except for ZSU 23 4, in which the light will flash at 3 hertz. Wow, <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> left, uh, left bank, please. Hang on, let me find that. Left bank, okay. Go means you had successful bit test for the airborne self protection jammer. No go means you had unsuccessful bit test. Left bleed and right bleed means that the air valve is automatically closed due to fire and bleed air test switch or bleed air leak or fire has been detected in the engine ducting. Speed brake means your speed brake is not fully retracted. Standby means your ALQ. Uh, ECM is set to standby, ALQ-165. L-bar red means your launch bar is malfunctioned. L-bar green means your launch bar is extended with weight on wheels. Um, record indicates aircraft is being illuminated by a threat's radar, or REC, I'm sorry, not record. Xmit is lit when the ECM transmitter is, or the ECM jammer is transmitting. And ASPJOH means your airborne self-protection jammer is overheating. I'll try to think of I'll see. Let's head back to the right console. Sensor panel, our FLIR, T-Pod, whatever you want to call it, is on, standby or off. Our laser designator, whether we want it armed or safe. Laser spot track, whether we want that option on or off. Our main INS mode knob you know cv alignment ground alignment main nav operation in flight alignment and so on a uh, very complex knob and it's covered fully in our navigation and startup tutorials our air to air or no sorry air to air and air to ground i suppose radar operation off energized uh, operational and we can pull it for emergency our ky58 this is an encryption panel all the knobs can turn but this is not modeled at least in dcs at the moment so nothing will do anything our flight control system built in test here that you're going to be doing probably on a startup and maybe other times as well. There's a selection of circuit breakers here and they say exactly what they do. Beware, this is all modelled. Canopy, whether you want to open it, close it, or hold. And we do, I think, have another built in test for a video camera up here somewhere. If I can get it to work. Uh, there we go. There, but that's not modelled, obviously. We move up onto the bow, mirrors on or off, our standard issue E2B magnetic compass there, and we have our uh, lock and shoot indicator here for uh, deploying missiles. And finally we've got three kind of pulley levers here. If we want to arm the ejection seat we do it like thus. If we want to eject we pull that guy there, I suggest not doing that. If we want to uh, do this guy here, the manual override handle, pull that, and it says when activated before ejection the manual override handle simultaneously releases the occupant's leg restraint cords and survival kit attachment lugs unlocks the upper harness inertial rear lock and automatically rotates the ejection seat safe arm handle up and forward to the safe position providing an expeditious means to egress the aircraft during an emergency while on the ground that is the fa18c cockpit i hope that was useful and see you later